Hey guys, Mike here with Harbor Canucks again, and I wanted to bring up AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution once again and a little bit of follow-up content here. Now, the reason why I wanted to do that is because other than the fact that it sparked a little bit of controversy both in our community and in others with some people saying it's an amazing technology and other people saying, oh, it makes everything look like potato quality, I wanted to go on a little bit of a different track because a lot of you guys in the initial video ended up saying, look, why did you go with such high-end GPUs? And truthfully, we really didn't. So we didn't go with the RX 6000 series or RTX 3000 series. We went with this guy, which is the RX 5700 XT and the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super. So in that feedback and comment thread, we listened to you guys and we went into our archives and also on sort of the Steam hardware survey. So we came up with this. One of these is the famous GTX 1060. This is a six gigabyte version, but you know, that's all we sort of had in our, in our back room right now. And the other one is the most popular AMD card on the charts, and that would be this. It is the RX 580. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention is not only is this the most popular NVIDIA card, it is actually the most popular GPU of all time, supposedly. Not only that, but I also wanted to bring up a little surprise a little bit later in this video, but if you haven't already skipped ahead to that little surprise, please hang on until right after a message from our sponsor. Extra 5 MZ1 Zyzrael, a unique project and a very unique mouse designed by Rocket Jump Ninja for better aim. After testing more than 250 mice, Zy knew what a mouse needed for maximum aim potential, but the shape did not exist. So he teamed up with Extra 5, shaped his own mouse and loaded it with top tier components. That means Pixar 3389 sensor, KLGM 8.0 switches, and the new EasyCord Pro on the lightest Extra 5 mouse yet. A killer in the right hands, try it out for yourself on extrafy.com. All right, guys, with that out of the way, I didn't really want to get into all the nitty gritty details about what FSR is and what it does and how it does it. Snow's from our Boot Sequence channel. He ended up doing an amazing explanation of that in the video that we teamed up with them on for that sort of like initial FSR explained and benchmarked video. And you can find that one sort of like right up here and right up there or right up there. But basically at a high level, what FSR does is it allows a game to render at a lower resolution that's then upscaled. And then it's passed through a sharpening process, which also does edge reconstruction. Now that has caused a little bit of controversy because it does add a little bit of softness to the image. But at the same time, I wanted to also bring up a couple of points that were also brought up in that video that you have to understand. First of all, FSR doesn't change based on different GPUs. From everything we've seen so far, if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. The second point is generally the scene does get blurrier and softer as levels increase, and there's also a general loss of some fine grained details. I mean, we've gone through that over and over again, and you're probably seeing that on these images. Also, as you apply higher levels of FSR, any rendering issues that were already there without it will typically get worse and worse and worse. And that's one of the major problems that we've seen with FSR right now or any image sharpening process and upscaling. On the other hand, personally, I don't think that balanced or performance modes of FSR are worthwhile. You really need to stick to ultra quality or quality to really, really make it worth your time. On the other hand, in every single case I've looked at so far, turning FSR to quality mode ends up being way, way better than simply modifying the in-game settings to get similar frame rates as to what FSR offers. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is that, look, this isn't an end all of every single solution. This is an ongoing process of development. We are seeing right now the very tip of the iceberg, sort of like what we saw with DLSS 1.0, where there's always improvements being made to the technology. And yes, I'm gonna bring this up again, the controversy about image quality is going to be there. But personally, I don't know about you guys, when I'm playing a game, I'm not pixel peeping at every single little leaf, every single little flower. I'm playing the game and a lot of the times, that means that I'm running through it a lot faster than things can process. What FSR does is it gives you simply another tool, another modifier to play around with as you go through trying to find the optimal image quality settings for the frame rate you want to achieve. So we're gonna get things started right away with the RX 580. And right away, the performance uplifts we're seeing here essentially mirror those from the last video when we use those higher end GPUs. Overall, there's a pretty linear improvement from one quality setting to the next, but there are 
are some bigger jumps here and there. All that ends up resulting in somewhere between double and triple the frame rate once everything is said and done. But what I wanted to mention again is that while balance and performance might look tempting, I'd avoid them altogether because of the massive loss of image quality. And what about, I guess, the, let's see, where is it? Right here. The GTX 1060. This one is, of course, that most popular card. Do its performance results mirror those of the AMD card? Well, it's the exact same thing as with the RX 580 and even the RTX 2070 Super when it comes to the amount of performance that's gained between each step of FSR. In some games, the biggest jump actually comes between off and ultra quality, while in others, it's between quality and balance. Generally though, just like with the other cards, the biggest benefit here comes from just stepping it up to ultra quality or just turning on FSR. One interesting thing is that I was able to turn ray tracing on in Rift Breaker with the GTX 1060, whereas the game wouldn't even allow that to be turned on with the RX 580. So on the NVIDIA 1000 series cards, it seems like you can actually use FSR to allow for some level of ray tracing and then again use that to claw back some of that massive frame rate hit. Now, if you haven't actually jumped to this portion, what was that little surprise I was talking about? Well, I wanted to go in and actually look at an even older GPU, something that isn't even officially supported by FSR, and see if that could actually bring out some additional performance increases out of that older card. This is probably maybe Nvidia's most infamous card, and it is the GTX 970. So, Officially, this is not supported by FSR, but at the same time, talking to AMD's engineers a little bit more, they actually said that technically any card that supports shader model 5.0 and higher will actually be able to support FSR. And what that does is it actually opens up FSR to a whole generation, 10 years almost, of GPUs. So I guess this might actually be one of the most important tests we're actually conducting for FSR right now. And it really does actually work on the GTX 970. What you'll end up seeing here are still some improvement benefits from moving to FSR. A lot of them aren't quite as massive as with the officially supported products like the ones that we were seeing before. Even stepping up to ultra quality or quality settings can allow you to go from an unplayable mess to something that's completely playable, especially in slower paced games. And plus, on memory limited cards like the GTX 970, this could be a huge benefit. But we also have to remember that if there's a change in the FSR algorithm, it could very well be that at some point in the future, as this technology evolves, that even these older cards may not be supported at all. And that brings me to the end of this video. And I'll be honest with all of you guys, I went into it hoping for the best for FSR because yes, in certain modes, there's always going to be that question about image quality, but I'm actually a fan of it. And if you want to call me a fanboy because of that, that's totally fine. But I went into this actually hoping for the best, even for this card, the GTX 970, that nobody at the time used to like and FSR delivered. It didn't deliver as huge performance benefits on a card that's not officially supported, but they were still there. But all of this sort of got me wondering about the long-term viability of FSR and if it's gonna be picked up by game developers. And everybody here at the office, we had a little debate about that and came up with a pretty simple conclusion. Game developers, they don't give two dams about the amount of cards that Nvidia or AMD sell. What they care about is selling their games to as many people as possible. And that means making those games as accessible as possible, making sure that those games look as good as possible. And that's what FSR allows them to do. So I cannot see any reason for FSR not to be rolled out into a ton more titles in the future. And that's really what I'm hoping. So that really ends this video for me. I hope it allowed you to get a little bit more perspective on the performance, at least, of these cards in FSR and what it can bring to the table. So I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks, and I really hope to see you in the next one. And keep on commenting in those comments below because it gives us some amazing ideas for additional content. Have a good one, guys.